As a movie fan, I go to the cinema, or as they say in America, the movie theatre quite a lot. It's something which I do pretty, you know, normally, usually, Saturday afternoon. I'm probably at the cinema. And we have really good experiences, but also very bad experiences. So... I wanted to do a video which I've been planning for so long now but I've kind of wanted to get all my ideas into one in my best and worst movie theatre experiences so I've chosen three from each so three of the best three of the worst and obviously I don't I didn't really know what footage to show over this so you'll just see the poster for whatever film it was uh, while I talk about it another thing to point out is I don't mean when I speak about this to um, if I am speaking about people which kind of ruined the experience of it. I am not hating on them or anything. I am just kind of giving a bit of advice how you should be a bit better in the film um, cinemas and things like that. And another thing is this doesn't depend on the film very much, especially the ones that I've picked. There may be ones in the worst category that are really great films and then ones in the best that might not be too great in your opinion however let's just get started so i want to start off with my best experiences um just to, to start off with because that's a really fun one to do and i think the first one which i have to point out here is avengers endgame as you know two billion dollar film amazing film now, even like the build up before I went to go see the film was fantastic. You know, I, you know, I had a very busy day ahead of me and I knew I needed to get through that day to watch Endgame with my entire family. Anyways, we get there and obviously we're all very excited to see it. There are people in cosplay dressed up. There are people grabbing all their snacks. There, you know, I even bought one of the overpriced uh, cinema cups, which had uh, Captain America on top of it. I still own that, actually. Um, they had a bunch of cardboard cutouts um, with basically uh, Iron Man, Black Widow, Captain America, and all these characters, uh, which was really, really fun. I had my T-shirt on rocking that. And then um, we went for Subway before, I think. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, a bunch of other members of my family wore a t-shirt, you know, th there was just a proper vibe there. And like, the whole cinema was decorated for Endgame because it was huge. Then we're in there and the whole time the trailers are playing, you can just hear people catching each other up and getting ready. They are sharing their predictions, everything. And normally I would probably criticise that for like talking, but... I didn't because it was during like the trailers and everything, so I didn't really care that much. And then the film starts, and just that opening scene, theatre goes mad. They go wild. They are screaming, just getting so excited. But it was a group. It was a bunch of people which, you know, they all knew they were in it together. They were experiencing it together. So there was never too much screaming. There was never too much you know, messing around and everything. There was just a lot of happiness in there. And then um, the film keeps playing, and then the, the final battle kicks in, we're in the third act. The portal scene starts, and people go wild. There's, like, a bunch of, like, a group of lads who are just screaming, going crazy. There's me and my whole family who are just in utter awe of what's going on, you know, Everyone was just cheering and screaming. And then when Iron Man dies, people were crying. And then you have the whole funeral scene and everything like that. And then the film ends. And no one does anything. There's silence. And then everyone starts clapping. People are crying, me included. But everyone is clapping. Just, just clapping, cheering, screaming. People are, you know, screaming the cast members' names, they're, you know, the Russo brothers' names, they're screaming at everything. And they're just like, this film is amazing, this is the best, you know, best night of my life and everything. So good. I, I honestly, I couldn't ask for more of that night. That was such a good night. 
Uh, it was a Friday evening as well, so that was 10 times better. Um, so you know you had the weekend to debrief. It was so good. I, I just, I couldn't amaze that one. Um, and then the next one, which kind of follows in the same lines, is Spider-Man No Way Home. So Spider-Man No Way Home, um, very, very anticipated film for me. Um, I don't know a lot of other people. And we went in there. There was eight of us. There was eight members of my family. Eight. That is a lot of people. Um, so there was eight of us who went in there. We had a row to ourselves. And we just walk in there. And it is packed. There are people dressed as Spider-Man. There's someone dressed as Spider-Man at the front, which I'll speak about in a minute, who's an absolute legend. Um, and just so many other people getting so excited. Everyone, you know... There's not, not even a single... The screen is just blank, but people are still getting really, really excited. And then we all sat there, and I'm speaking to kind of like, you know, I'm speaking to my family, you know, getting our predictions in, getting really excited, you know, and everything like that. And then there's like a group, I would say there was probably about 15, just group of lads in the top right. And we already were... I was concerned already how loud they were being that we weren't really able to watch the film right however i mentioned the guy who was dressed as spider-man at the front when the film starts he does a backflip <laughs> in front of everyone when the title card plays and then runs back to his seat so i i didn't you know worry about that too much and everyone's getting so excited during the film you know when doc ox returning you know i'm just jumping up screaming like pretty much Everyone else in there, we were all just getting so excited. And then there was the scene where Andrew returned. And when the portal opens and you see his back, people just start screaming from the top of their lungs, shaking each other, you know, in utter awe, so happy. And then people just literally start bawling their eyes out and crying when he pulls that mask off. Then when Toby comes back, the exact thing happens again double down the screaming it was so good and then by the time it was ending the theater was crying in so you know so emotional and then you just walk out of there everyone is talking about the exact same thing you know obviously the workers had probably seen it and they were speaking about it it was so good like it was so fun such a fun night it was just basically the same as Endgame, but 10 times better, pretty much. And then the final one of the best, which is a very recent one, um, which is, in fact, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, as you know, I'm a massive Mario fan, and to finally see this film was so good. Like, there was four of us who went, went to IMAX, as a matter of fact, and just the experience as a whole was amazing. There was this humongous poster, taller than my house, outside, um, I've got my Mario hat on and everything. Uh, there's a huge cardboard cutout of the main poster, which you've seen on your screen. That was really, really cool. There was just loads of other things. There were people getting really excited. And the best part about it is that it was diehard Mario fans because we went actually late at night. There wasn't like many children or anything in there. But yeah, in general, it was just a really, really fun experience. Kind of, you know... It was my first IMAX experience, as a matter of fact, and then kind of just to see Mario on the big screen and kind of just, you know, react with the best kind of people that could, you know, you could hear people pointing out references and having all sorts of fun. As a matter of fact, we were the first ones in there, so we spent about 20 minutes on our own in there, which was super duper cool, uh, and things like that. It was just like the overall experience was really good. You know, there was so much, you know, product placement you know all around there you know related to mario for some reason there was loads of posters so much marketing it was just a really really fun time and i'm really grateful that i got to see that and that this film exists as a matter of fact though i did see it another three times i did end up seeing the film four times at the cinema um but i would say this one this one was by far the best one of them all um although they were all great so now I think it's time we move on to the worst experiences I have had in the cinema or movie theatre 
Um, and these ones are really easy to put together because, like, they're more recent films, all of these ones, keep in mind. Uh, like, these ones are really easy to uh, for me to decide which ones they were. Um, so, yeah. Um, and there's a, bit, there's a slight pattern with these ones as well, which kind of all come together a little bit. Now, the first one I want to speak about uh, was actually Toy Story 4. Now, um, I don't actually like this film very much, sadly not. As time's gone on, I just I just really am not that big of a fan of this film anymore. Um, in general, when I first saw it, I didn't think it was amazing. And now it's just, you know, it's not, you know, it doesn't really matter. Although the, the theatre experience itself wasn't really, um, it wasn't really because of the people in there or anything like that. It was actually because of the heating. I know this is the thing that, you know, everyone has suffered once or twice, but the aircon broke and it was in the middle of June and um, it was like 30 to 40 degree weather outside. And we wanted, you know, we, we went to go see Toy Story 4 and obviously we bought our tickets, we paid and then they tell us there's an issue. They don't, that's something which they, they do. They don't tell you until you've paid. Um, and there was no way to get a refund after that. There was, there was nothing. Um, so as a whole, we were already like, it was very, very warm. Anyways, we go in the cinema, in the screen and there's people with like their literal tops off and we're closer to the top of the screen and it is very, very hot. It is sweating. Like it is very, very hot during the trailers and we were struggling in there, um, as it was. And then basically it kind of stopped. Um, it kind of, I, f I don't know if, if maybe the air, they repaired the air con for a little bit because then it cooled down a little bit and then the air con stopped again and then it was 10 times hotter than it originally was. And we're going through this film and it's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and harder to sit through to which we don't even know what really we're going to do because we're so hot in here. Just sat in here and you know everyone else is suffering you know people were leaving a lot of, there was less people than when we got in than to when we left uh no other way around oh, other way around sorry that's stupid there was less people when we left to where there was when we went in so that kind of explains it so it was not good it was it was really really bad uh and on top of that i was very disappointed in the film so it wasn't the greatest thing ever. Second one here is another animated one actually, which came out in 2022, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Now, if you know Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, you know it's a bit more of an edgier, slightly more scarier, and you know, got a bit of a darker tone than other DreamWorks and just animated films in general. And um, I go in there uh, with someone else obviously, and we're sat in there. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the film, I'm really excited for it. Um, and then this, relatively large group of people like a family come in and they're like stood at the front um and they're just stood there and then another large group come in and it's like a family reunion like they're all hugging there's little kids there screaming messing about and it's a family reunion pretty much and the worst thing happens there's one half in front of us and one half behind us and there's kids everywhere, kids screaming, everything. And it was very, very difficult. One reason being there was this weird, it, there was this just a series of events. There's one really weird situation where uh, someone's drink ran out. So they had brought in like a large bottle and a small cup and they were just pouring it to like, they were leaning across trying to pour the drink for everyone in like their own cups, which was really weird. They were catching up. They were literally having a family reunion and catching up on different things, which was so weird. They were just talking the whole entire first half of the film. Then when death comes in, the wolf, there are kids in there who are way too young to be watching the film. Like, there was very young children in there. And as it was, people were getting scared, like young children. But the ones in front of us just started screaming and crying. And they were sitting on, they ended up sitting on their father's or mother's lap and were just 
hugging them and crying. But because they were sat on their lap, we couldn't see the screen and we couldn't move because the cinema was so packed. And it was one of those situations where we did consider leaving. However, there was also the thing of paying the price for another ticket for Puss in Boots, which, you know, we didn't really want to do at the time. Um, and just things like that. I will say it did get a little bit better um, as it went on, I would say. However, when it got to the real end bit, there was like, people were a bit bored at that point, that family. And while the credits are on, they, and like towards the end of the film, they just stand up. And they literally just stood in front of us. We cannot see anything. They are just stood up. And I just think that's just plain ruse. Like, People have taken time out of their day and paid money to go and see a film and you're just disrespecting them. Like, just in general. I just don't see why you would do that on it, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but last one on here, this is by far my worst film experience I've ever had, to my memory. And that is one of the more recent ones. Dune Part 2. Absolutely phenomenal film. Absolutely loved it. But, there was so much annoying stuff going on in my screen. Uh, the first thing was, um, we go in there, and it's pretty packed, relatively busy theatre. Anyways, we sit down, film starts, um, and some of the lights go off, but not all of them. So the, the lights that are on the ceiling don't go off. They're all on for some reason. I've never had that fault. They are all on. And... They're, the ones at the side are off, just the ones that are, you know. So, there was lights literally reflecting on the screen that you couldn't even see what was going on at some point. And there was this big light above us, and that was really annoying and really frustrating. The lights just stayed on the whole film. They never went off, which was so annoying. And then there was this group of people who just thought they were a bunch of comedians. So... What they were doing is they were sat in the right-hand corner to me, um, a few rows down, um, and they were just laughing and messing about. They were throwing things at each other. They were throwing food at each other at one point and just laughing. So, And then they started making farting sound effects. Some of them started making literal inappropriate, you know, phrases and noises which I do not even want to repeat because it is just plain like immature um and they were they were, they started wrestling at one point one person actually jumped on another and they were wrestling in the middle of the th theater and then there was this one guy behind them who got very very angry and was trying to talk to them but they were not listening so he gets off his chair goes down and gets a, th a two theater employees who, in front of everyone, are just telling them off. Like, you know, you need to sort yourself out, otherwise you're out of here, I'm sorry. And they're just pointing at laughing in this person's face, just laughing at them. And then they leave, and then the whole entire film, they're just doing it again. They're just doing it again and again and again. And I, it was hard to just concentrate on the film in that situation. Why didn't I leave? Again, it's just the expense of paying another ticket. And, you know, and just in general... I've taken time out of my day to see it. I'm still going to do that. I'm not just going to let a bunch of people just ruin my experience. Like, it's that bad. It's it's not... It's not good. It's just disrespectful. I, I hate to sound like one of those people, but in that situation, you're just being disrespectful to the to the people. You're not gaining anything. You're not in... You, grow, you know, you're not in a classroom where you're mucking about in your maths lesson or anything like that. You're just being plain that rude. And you just need to grow up. Like, in that situation, I'm sorry to say that because that sounds so immature, but it's true. You just need to sort yourself out. It's not that hard. But yeah, guys, that is my best and worst theatre experiences. This was quite a long video. However, that is my list. I would love to know some of yours down below. I really like hearing these stories because we've all got our own. Um, but these are my best and worst ones. And the things to take away from this video... It's just don't be stupid when you're in the cinema. Just, just if you don't want to be in there, then just leave. Just don't go. Like in general, don't do it to make other people's lives a misery. There's many more things to do, you know, than go to the cinema. So that's all I've got to say for it. 
But that is all for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please do comment, like, and subscribe, share this with your friends and family. That's all for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.